Let's go. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit didst instruct the hearts of thy faithful, grant us by the same Holy Spirit to be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, the gospel for today comes from uh, St. Matthew, chapter 15, verses 29 to 37. So, the first part of this gospel is. Uh, uh, St. Matthew narrates how our Lord was walking through the Sea of Galilee and plenty of sick people were brought to him to get cured. And he says, My heart is moved with pity for the crowd, for they have been with me now for three days and have nothing to eat. I do not want to send them away hungry for fear they might collapse on the way. The disciples said to him, where could we get enough bread in this deserted place to satisfy such a crowd? Jesus said to them, how many loaves do you have? Seven, they replied, and a few fish. He ordered the crowd to sit down on the ground. Then he took the seven loaves and the fish and gave thanks, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied. They picked up the fragments left over, seven baskets full. So, this is the um, narration of the miracle of the multiplication of the loaves. Okay. and the fish. And it is, of course, a prefiguring of the Holy Eucharist, that sacrament where our Lord has desired to remain with us, despite physically also ascending into heaven, where, where He could be somehow hidden under the species of bread and wine, hiding in the tabernacle, waiting for us to approach him, to come to him, to pray to him, right? For the last 2,000 years, he has wanted to remain in the bread, remain in the Eucharist, remain under the guise of bread, and wine, but in truth, he is there substantially present in his divinity, in his humanity, in his blood and his flesh. Okay? It's the whole Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. Now we might ask, well, why is this gospel today, this miracle about the multiplication of the loaves, relevant? For the time of Advent. Okay. Why is the church giving us this miracle to consider during this time of Advent? The significance of this is because the Eucharist is the gift that keeps on giving. The Eucharist is our Lord's way of giving himself to us in a perpetual manner, not only sacramentally, not only spiritually, but even physically, making himself available as bread to us, nourishment to us. And this sacrament of the Eucharist reminds us that Jesus whose coming we anticipate, right, uh, by celebrating Advent. He whose coming we anticipate through Advent is actually also 
simultaneously already here, already with us, always with us, and actually never left us, actually never left the world. He remained with us, although in a different form, in a different way, in a different manner, but it is the same Jesus. It is the same Jesus. So it's, it's kind of paradoxical that we are in a time of anticipation, right? The season of Advent, anticipation of the coming of our Lord. And as I had explained before, it is anticipation of two comings. Number one, the commemoration of his birth at Christmas time. And the other one is the second coming. When he will come to judge the world and finally, you know, uh, bring those who deserve the reward of heaven to heaven and those who don't deserve the reward of heaven to condemn them to hell. This is what Advent wants to remind us. These are the realities we are about to face and Advent is here to remind us about this, the coming of our Lord. But the paradox of this is that, well, while we are preparing to welcome our Lord, uh -oh. while we are anticipating the arrival of our Lord, both in Christmas and His final coming, the last judgment, in reality and in truth, He never left us. He is here with us. You might need to close that door so it's less noise while the bark is going on. And so while we anticipate the coming of our Lord, this gospel today is also a reminder that we have to learn to treasure and value the fact that he is always with us, the fact that he is here with us, the fact that he has chosen to remain with us in the Eucharist. Jesus, who is hidden in the Eucharist, is waiting for us, is, is there and has been there for the last 2,000 years, making himself available for us. In a sense, it's actually our Lord who is anticipating us, who is waiting for us as we wait for him to come at Christmas and to, to, to come at the end of time, while our Lord is also doing some waiting there on the tab in the tabernacle. He is waiting for us. He is waiting for us all the time to come to him. He is the one waiting for us, anticipating our arrival, anticipating the day, the time, the hour, the minute that we could go to him and pray uh, uh, before him and, and, and unburden ourselves to him and petition him for the many things that we need in life and the many things we need to become saints. And asking him for pardon for our sins and making reparation for the wrong things we have done and cost to him. So that's another way of thinking of Advent. It is not only us anticipating our Lord's coming, but rather our Lord is also anticipating our approaching him in the Eucharist, our coming to him in the Eucharist. And that's the way I would see this gospel today as to why, uh, why uh, the church has, has uh, deemed it important that we be reminded of the Eucharist, that we be reminded of our Lord uh, uh, giving us himself in the Eucharist because he too is anticipating our coming. He too is anticipating our arrival all the time and then what is even a greater fulfillment of that anticipation is when we finally get to intimately be connected and reunited with him when we receive him in holy communion right? so 
that that intimate time of union of connection of assimilation right when we take him into us when he comes into us at holy communion when we receive him that is like the fulfillment of advent right because while we anticipate him he anticipates us coming to him when we get to meet at the altar rail, when we actually receive our Lord. That is the fulfillment of Advent. That union right there when we receive him is a fulfillment of the Advent that we have been trying to, to, to commemorate. So in reality, Advent happens all the time to us. If we only know how to recognize Jesus in the Holy Eucharist, if we only learn to understand that our Lord has been there waiting for us in the tabernacle all this time, anticipating our coming, anticipating our arrival. So let us always live out this Advent. Okay? So Advent should not only be, you know, the four weeks uh, as we prepare for our Lord's coming at Christmas and all and, and remembering the time when he when uh, he might come in the final judgment but let us always remember that Advent happens every time especially uh, when we understand how our Lord has been waiting for us in the tabernacle all this time uh, through the Holy Eucharist Okay. okay, let's go. May the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Michael. Pray for us. St. Raphael. Pray for us. St. Gabriel. Pray for us. St. Joseph. Pray for us. Holy Mary, our hope and seat of wisdom. Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen.